Colorado has a few great industries. Among them is farming, which doesn't always get the recognition it needs. I love this. Sean Martini from the Farmers Bureau. Farmers, farmers, the uh, Colorado, Colorado Farm, Farm Bureau. Bureau. There we go. That's I it. knew there was there was furniture involved somewhere. Yes. All right. All right. You know, I think about traditional Colorado growing up, mm -hmm. before we had the tech center, before we had tech uh, industries, it was oil and gas, it was farming, it was mining. That's what sure. made Colorado, Colorado, and it's much more diverse, but still most of Colorado is involved in farming. I mean, this is a big state. How, it is. How many, how many farmers out there? there what, what, what part of the economy is this? This is the second largest uh, industry in the state of Colorado, it generates over $41 billion in economic activity every year. So it's significant. Right behind oil and gas, am I thinking right? Shift around in there between them and uh, tourism. Really? Mm -hmm. What? We forget that Colorado is really part of, of, of America's breadbasket. That this is it. What gets grown in Colorado? We grow over 200 different commodities here in this state. Uh, predominantly, it's cattle and calves for our ranchers up in the mountains and in the western, uh, the eastern part of the state. Uh, wheat, irrigated corn. We grow a lot of produce uh, and even stone fruit here in Colorado, out in Palisade as well. What's stone fruit? Peaches, apricots, anything that's got a got a, a seed or a stone in the center of it. Cherries. Didn't know that. All yeah. right. I remember going back in high school, the plight of the American farmer that he couldn't keep up with the loans. The bankers were the bad guys, of course, and big, mean, big agriculture came in and swooped in, destroying the family farm. Is, is that an accurate story? How, does it, how did it play out here in Colorado? Uh, it played out here in Colorado back then, uh, kind of the way you describe it. Um, but, you know, over 95% uh, of farms and ranchers across the country are still family owned. Uh, it just comes down to a question of scale. Is it family owned and is it a 5,000 acre farm? Is it family owned and is it a 640 acre farm? Uh, you know, it's the, the size question is really, uh, you know, not the biggest thing. We work a lot better with our bankers now. Uh, farmers and ranchers deploy technology uh, at rates that a lot of other industries wish they could. Um, we're really out sort of on the bleeding edge doing what we can to, to produce as much food for America and the world as we can. And technology is completely different now. I mean, uh, the tractors, the combines, it's, this, is, this is not green acres. This is, no. this is amazing to see how, how big the, the operations are. Talk to me a little bit about the genetic part of this. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be this big, the big issue oh, of sure. modified foods. People are scared of it. How modified are our foods? Not very at all. Uh, it's subtle and tiny changes uh, in the like types what? of foods. Uh, it's swapping out a gene here, a, a gene, a couple of genes. Uh, for the, for instance, uh, Roundup Ready corn. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a plant that is uh, genetically modified. They swap a couple of genes uh, to make it resistant to uh, a chemical salt, glyphosate, uh, so that we can become more efficient uh, in our application of herbicides, uh, reduce our environmental footprint, and increase the efficiency. Uh, and, and also the output of uh, a modified crop of corn versus a traditional one. Colorado is looking at some labeling of GMOs, because that's a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. That sounds so innocuous. You know, we'll just, we'll just label these things so people know. That's a lot harder to do in reality, isn't it? It is. Uh, the supply chains are, are extremely difficult uh, to have uh, the level of confidence that you would need to be able to meet a labeling standard. We had Prop 105 uh, a couple of election cycles ago here in Colorado, and we were uh, one of the leading voices against that just because it was, it was a poorly written measure. Uh, it opted out uh, a significant number of products that would have otherwise been considered genetically modified. And it was just bad law for Colorado. Uh, it's, it's bad law nationwide. Wide, Why know. is it bad law? I mean, isn't the concept a good one that, you know, you know, I, I take a, I look at a beer and it tells me what's inside. I look at the soup, soup container, I see what's inside. If I want to buy an ear of corn, shouldn't I know if it's, if it's been genetically altered? If it made a difference, it would be one thing. The science is clear, and and we like public policy that that follows the science. In this case, the science is clear that there's no problem with this. So why introduce uh, a question in the consumer's mind that they're not going to be able to sort through while they're standing in the grocery aisle looking at a label? Isn't there also that it's it's um, it's a commodity, and people don't quite get that when the corn or wheat comes in, 
it gets thrown in a silo with all the other corn, right? It's not it's not siloed differently. I, I'm curious. Is that the way well, that, it works? That's one of the that's one of the the difficulties in complying with this sort of a standard. There uh, there were several other state standards that were that were proposed over the last couple of years, and that's the biggest problem with complying with this kind of thing is the cost that it takes to change the supply chains and the long tail of the supply chains that we have in agriculture all the way through the food production. You industry. say supply chains. Draw that out for me. What does a supply chain so look like? So that is from the field uh, where you pick. Uh, your ear of wheat. corn or, or wheat. wheat. Pick, you, know, you go through the field, uh, harvest the wheat, it gets trucked to a local elevator. Uh, the elevator screens it, uh, cleans it, uh, puts it probably on uh, a rail car. That goes any number of hundreds of miles uh, to uh, a, another shipping facility. Uh, where in or might, out of Colorado? In or out of Colorado. It can go all over the place. Our, our commodities are used here in Colorado. They go out of Colorado. Some of them are shipped out of the country to China, Japan, other countries uh, that we have trade agreements with, which is extremely important for agriculture as well. Uh, then it, w once it enters uh, you know, the food manufacturing side, it can go a number of different places to any number of different food manufacturers who all have their own supply chains and logistical issues within their operations that have to comply with this kind of a labeling mandate as well. So it gets extremely complex and extremely cost prohibitive to be able to, uh, to have any sort of level of confidence that, that the label that's being put on a box of graham crackers is actually living up uh, to what's in that box. You mentioned a bit about trade. There was, if I understand, it's getting better. Even though there was fear that trade was going to be tough under, under uh, uh, Trump, our beef is going some, other, some new places. They recently opened up uh, beef to China, which has been closed off uh, to American beef for a number of years. Uh, we're really excited about that. That's, that's I'm not. <laughs> I, w I want beef prices low. I don't need to go into China. It can go to China. Uh, we've got the ability to significantly enlarge the beef herd in this country, uh, and that's one of the reasons why we've had uh, uh, you know higher beef prices in the grocery cabinet uh, over the last few months. Is is our our, our herd level nationally is is pretty depressed. Uh, so being Why able to, uh, it's a number of factors, uh, commodity prices, uh, demand, um, lack of, of, of access to countries like China. Um, it's, it's, it's been a difficult few years for agriculture and we're, we're starting to see the end of it. Hopefully if we can get a few more trade deals inked uh, so that we can take the large amount of food that we produce here and be able to, to spread it around the world duty free. And uh, I mean, important. America is, if, if we were Saudi Arabia, Instead of oil, we're sending out food. I mean, that, that is one of our, bigger ex, our biggest exports. It is. It, it's one of the few areas where we have a trade surplus. Talk to me about Colorado. We just got a few minutes left, but sure. Colorado has challenges as well. First, it's got to be water and then regulation. What is it? You're down at the Capitol. Your members want you down at the Capitol. Why? You know, we spend a lot of time in agriculture defending against things that are going to negatively impact our producers. A lot of things are proposed uh, that seem innocuous or seem like they will only target one specific area of the economy or particular industry. Uh, because we are price takers, not price makers, we sell commodities. Uh, because we're, we're very dependent on Mother Nature, the weather, uh, being friendly to us in order to make a crop and make a profit, a lot of different areas of public policy impacts agriculture, and most of the time it's negative. Uh, so a lot of the time what we spend our time doing is working with legislators to, to try and help uh, bridge the gap, the knowledge gap, uh, and help them understand how uh, what a seemingly innocuous proposal might be that's really going to negatively what impact our What is the one producers. thing that they don't get, or people in general don't get, about agriculture? I Pe think when people walk away about Colorado's ag business, what is it? Uh, it's almost everything you know there's a there's a, a big gap between folks who live in the urban corridor and folks who live in rural colorado and that that knowledge gap exists there as well uh, I think the biggest thing is that it's just what I mentioned before. We're price takers. We're not price makers. We can't pass along the cost of regulation and the cost of compliance to our consumers because because, because your competitor in the other state doesn't have to deal with it, and you're paying the same price or buying the same price. Exactly. It's a it's a it's a, a an exchange price. It's a commodity price. That's that's set. Uh, there's there's only a little bit of movement there, uh, and and so to absorb those or to 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 take on those extra costs that comes directly out of our bottom lines. We can't pass it on to the consumer by setting our retail price. Last question: Can you get me free steak? I wish I could. I'm working on that myself. Don't you have cows there in the office? Uh, 
Still got Mr. Martini, Still thank got you so him. much. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Read me in the Denver Post. Learn about the Independence Institute. Go to independenceinstitute.org. Sign up for our newsletter. Find out what's going on. We'll see you next week.